To disassemble the balance cock, first locate the hairspring stud screw shown here. Loosen this screw a few turns but do not remove it. Take the point of your tweezers or a small screwdriver and gently press the hairspring stud away from the balance cock. Here's a shot of the balance wheel with the hairspring and a shot of the roller table and the roller jewel. Be sure to tighten this screw back down so it doesn't vibrate out. Now we can remove the balance cock jewels. Loosen the two screws as shown here. And as before, either with the point of your tweezers or a piece of pegwood, press the jewels out from behind. Again, there is a cap jewel and a hole jewel. Here you can see the complete disassembly of the watch. All the parts are in a parts basket that will be placed into the ultrasonic for cleaning. If you do not have one of these baskets, a baby food jar or a jar small enough to go into your ultrasonic will do just as well. You can see I have the pallet fork and the balance wheel and the dial separately. These do not go through the ultrasonic. Here's a shot of the ultrasonic that I use for watch cleaning. We'll place the basket with the parts in the ultrasonic. Another method of cleaning watches is the Watchmaster shown here. These machines were made probably in the 1940s. They are occasionally available on eBay for about $150. Here's a shot of the two chemicals that are used for watch cleaning. One is a watch cleaning solution and one is a rinsing solution. You will need both. Now we're going to clean the balance wheel and the pallet fork using a product called One Dip and a parts blower. With your tweezers, place the pallet fork into the bottle of One Dip and agitate gently for about 10 seconds. Use the parts blower to blow away any remaining One Dip. To clean the balance wheel, pick it up with your tweezers nearest the cross arm, put it into the one dip for about 10 seconds, and blow dry with the blower. Never use your breath to dry parts, as the acid in your saliva can cause corrosion. Also, be sure to cap the one dip when you're through because it will evaporate very quickly. I want to take a moment to talk about the plate jewels and the balance jewels. As you can see, there is a hole jewel and a cap jewel for both. Now, if you happen to get these uh, mixed up, if you look at the, the hole jewel and the cap jewel, they're shaped a little differently. They're also different thicknesses. The jewels at the top are the plate jewels. The jewels at the bottom are the hole jewels. You can try to insert the hole jewel into the balance cock. As you see, it will not go in. Now we try to insert the correct jewel, and you see it goes in rather easily. That's, how, that's one way you can tell which jewel you have.
Okay, we'll go ahead and put the cap jewel in. As you can see, it's thicker than the one that goes in the plate. This is the cap jewel for the plate. And like I said, you can see it's a lot thinner. When you put the cap jewel in, make sure to align the two notches for the two jewel screws. Press it in with the end of your tweezers. And then replace the two screws. Now repeat the process to install the plate jewels. Insert the whole jewel first, followed by the cap jewel, aligning the notches for the screws. Press into place with your tweezers and reinstall the two screws. Now that we have all the parts out of the ultrasonic, you want to take a moment and inspect the parts for wear or breakage. Now we want to take a piece of pegwood sharpened at one end like a pencil and peg out each one of the jewel holes to remove any oil that the ultrasonic didn't clean. Start with the largest jewel and work to the smallest jewel, rotating the pegwood back and forth gently so you don't crack the jewel. Don't forget the center hole for the center shaft and the hole for the mainspring barrel arbor. This is a set of watch dip oilers. They have their own little stand with a cover to cover the little cups of oil to keep dust and stuff out of them. We're going to start by taking one of the oilers and putting a little bit of lubrication on the winding stem. Okay, now we can start reinstalling the train wheels. We'll start with the center wheel. Next, the fourth wheel. The escape wheel. The third wheel. And lastly, the pallet fork. Shown here are the banking pins. The pallet fork moves back and forth between these pins, and they regulate the amount of swing that the pallet fork has. Now we're going to go ahead and replace the plate on top of the movement. On the three-quarter movement, you have to slide the plate in under the pallet fork Locate it on the pillars and then gently manipulate each pivot back into its jewel hole. I'm going to do my best here to show you how I manipulate each one of the pivots back into the jewel holes. It's very, very difficult for me to show you this on the video. Once you get all the pivots back in place and the plate drops down, you need to check each one of the gears for end shape. Take your tweezers and gently lift each 
wheel up and down in its jewels and make sure that they have just a little bit of end shake. Now we can go ahead and lubricate around the click. And reinstall the ratchet wheel. Note the small depression on the bottom side of the ratchet wheel. It goes over the little boss here on the plate. Make sure the click engages the ratchet wheel. If you neglected to make a sketch of the mainspring before you removed it, you can use the hook on the arbor to show you which way that the mainspring should be reinstalled. In this case, this mainspring needs to go in where it will spiral out clockwise. We'll use a tool called a mainspring winder to reinstall the mainspring into the barrel. This one's made by KND. It comes with several different attachments to fit different size mainspring barrels. You want to select the attachment that closely fits the size of the mainspring barrel, but not too tightly. Place the mainspring into the barrel so that when it's inserted into the barrel, it will unwind in the correct direction. Wind the mainspring into the mainspring winder, leaving about half of an inch sticking out. Turn the handle the opposite direction for a couple of turns to release it from the mainspring. You can see in this barrel there's a small catch and a small notch in the barrel. At the end of this mainspring, there's a small hole and a small tab. That's another way you can tell which way the mainspring goes back into the barrel. You want to hook the hole in the mainspring over the tab in the barrel. You want to hold the end of the mainspring with a pair of tweezers so that the end of the mainspring doesn't come unhooked. And then press on top of the mainspring winder to insert the mainspring back into the barrel. Now reinstall the mainspring barrel arbor, making sure that the end of the mainspring engages the catch. To reinstall the mainspring barrel cap, you can see the small notch sticking out of the mainspring. Align this tab on the mainspring with the square notch in the barrel cap. Squeeze gently on the mainspring barrel cap to snap it back into place. You can use a pair of smooth jaw pliers to snap it back into place. We're going to use a product called Radico to remove all of our fingerprints on the mainspring barrel. Now we can place the mainspring barrel back into the movement. You can see the, the square notch in the ratchet wheel, which goes over the square on the bottom of the mainspring barrel arbor. Now we can reinstall the mainspring barrel bridge. Install the two screws and tighten securely.
Before we reinstall the cannon pinion, we want to put a small drop of oil right around the center shaft. Then we can press the cannon pinion back into place. Here I have the vibrating arm reassembled with all the intermediate setting and winding wheels. We can now install this back into the movement. Next we can reinstall the little beveled washer and finally the screw. Remember this screw must be turned left to tighten. Next we can install the minute wheel. Put a small drop of oil around its arbor. And then finally, reinstall the hour wheel. Last, install the dowel washer. Before we replace the dowel, we need to put a small drop of oil on each one of the pivots to lubricate each one of the jewels. We can go ahead and reinstall the set lever and the set lever screw. Loosen the dial screws out a few turns before you reinstall the dial. To reinstall the dial, first locate the fourth pivot shown here. Line that with the hole in the seconds ring and gently press the dial back onto the movement. If the dial doesn't go back on easily, loosen the, the dial screws another couple of turns. Once the dial is in place, snug the dial screws. Do not over tighten these as it will crack the dial. Next we can reinstall the dust ring. Line the hole in the dust ring with the winding stem and gently press into place. To reinstall the balance wheel, first loosen the hairspring stud screw. We're going to go ahead and put a small drop of oil on the whole jewel on the balance cock and then use a small oiler to cause the oil to wick down into the cap jewel. Align the hairspring stud with the hole in the balance cock. Set the balance wheel in place, making sure the hairspring goes between the guide pins. Snug the hairspring stud screw. Here you can see the guide pins with the first coil of the hairspring between them. Before we reinstall the balance wheel, we need to go ahead and lubricate the balance jewels. Put a small drop of oil on the, on the whole jewel and use a small oiler to cause that oil to wick in. Then apply one small drop to each one of the pivots to lubricate each of the jewels. Don't forget the top of the mainspring barrel arbor. Now we can take Radico to remove our fingerprints off the back of the movement. Now we can go ahead and reinstall the balance wheel and balance cock. As you lower the balance wheel into place, make sure that the roll jewel goes into the notch on the fork. Now we can go ahead and reinstall the balance cock screw. 
make sure that the pivots on the balance wheel are in the jewel holes before you tighten the screw down.